In this segment, we'll explore a few more intriguing aspects of nouns that will help you take your language skills to new heights. Countable and uncountable. Noun shifts. Some nouns in English can be both countable and uncountable, depending on the context or meaning. For example, paper is usually uncountable when referring to the material, as in, I need some paper for the printer. However, it becomes countable when talking about individual sheets or types of paper, like, I've graded 20 papers today, or they offer a variety of papers for different uses. Here are some more examples of nouns that can shift between countable and uncountable. Light. When referring to the general concept, light is uncountable, as in, the room was filled with a soft light. But when talking about specific sources or types of light, it becomes countable, like the photographer used several lights to create the desired effect. Cheese. As a substance in general, cheese is uncountable, as in, I love adding cheese to my pasta dishes. But when discussing specific varieties or pieces of cheese, it becomes countable, like the cheese platter featured a variety of cheeses from around the world. Hair. When referring to the hair on one's head, hair is uncountable, as in, her hair is so soft and shiny. But when talking about individual strands, it becomes countable, like, I found a few gray hairs this morning. Experience. As general knowledge, experience is uncountable, as in, experience is the best teacher. But when discussing specific events, it becomes countable, like, she had many wonderful experiences during her trip to Japan. Time. As a general concept, time is uncountable, as in, time is a precious resource. But when referring to specific instances or periods, it becomes countable, like, they had a great time at the party. Being aware of these shifts can help you use nouns more precisely and effectively in your communication. Noun clauses. Noun clauses are dependent clauses that function as nouns in a sentence. They can act as subjects, objects, or complements. Noun clauses often begin with words like that, what, who, whom, whose, which, when, where, why, how, or if. Listen to these examples. 1. What she said surprised everyone. In this sentence, the noun clause, what she said, acts as the subject. 2. I don't know where he lives. Here, the noun clause, where he lives, serves as the object. 3. The truth is that I'm afraid of heights. In this case, the noun clause, that I'm afraid of heights, functions as the complement. Here are a few more examples to help you understand noun clauses better. 1. I wonder if they will arrive on time. The noun clause, if they will arrive on time, acts as the object. 2. Whoever finishes the project first will receive a bonus. In this sentence, the noun clause, whoever finishes the project first, serves as the subject. 3. The question is whether we have enough resources to complete the task. Here, the noun clause, whether we have enough resources to complete the task, functions as the complement. 4. She asked me what I wanted for dinner. The noun clause, what I wanted for dinner, acts as the object. 5. That he won the competition came as no surprise to his teammates. In this example, the noun clause, that he won the competition, serves as the subject. Recognizing and using noun clauses can help you construct more complex and expressive sentences in your writing and speech. Mastering noun tips here today. Learning rules, find your way.